Hey everyone, Rich Gassaway here. I'm planning the biggest situational awareness event I've ever done. September 26th is National Situational Awareness Day, and I'm taking that a step further and declaring September to be National Situational Awareness Month. I'm looking for program hosts to help fill the month with events throughout the United States and Canada. So if you're interested in helping me make this a success, please contact me through the Contact Me tab on the essaymatters.com website. If you want to train your members online, you can do that now too by enrolling them in the Situational Awareness Matters Online Academy. The Academy will teach your members everything they need to know about situational awareness and high-risk decision-making for a crazy affordable price. If you enroll 31 or more of your members, the cost is just $49 a person. Why did I set the price so low? Because I don't want any department to say that the cost was the prohibiting factor in getting their members trained on this vitally important topic. The Academy just opened for enrollments, and I've already got more than 700 students uh, in the Academy taking the class, and I'm getting some great, great feedback from the students, too. Did you know that issues related to situational awareness are consistently identified as contributing factors in near-miss injury and fatality events? Please, please, please. Don't wait until your agency has a critical injury or fatality incident. Please don't wait. I get to work with many departments that have experienced critical injuries and fatality incidents, and they're some of the most hurting organizations you can imagine. Please, I don't want that to happen to you. Seriously, I can take your understanding of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making to the level it needs to be. Visit essaymatters.com, click the green button, the green button on the right side of the homepage, labeled online, Academy. To our premium enrolled students in the Academy, they get to participate in a monthly webinar where I have guests talk about important safety topics. This month's webinar's guest was Joe Pernesti talking about how to incorporate simulations into your command training. The next webinar is scheduled for July 16th and will feature former Washington, D.C. Fire Chief Dennis Rubin talking about crew resource management. Premium enrolled students will get a notification sent to you in the course room along with your login credentials. Okay, that's enough pre-show stuff. Roll that podcast intro. Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Bert Clark, and you're listening to the SA Matters Radio Show with Rich Gasper. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the 167th episode of the Situation Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situation awareness and decision-making for individuals and teams who work in high-risk, high-consequence, time-compressed environments with changing conditions. The SA Matters mission is simple, to help you see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. If you're new to the podcast, you have some homework to do by going back and listening to the past episodes. I've released a new episode every Tuesday, never missed a week, for over three years. And I do that for you, the listeners of this show. You inspire me to work hard for you. I've been sharing the message of situation awareness and high-risk decision-making in live program events for over 12 years now and have trained just over 59,000 first responders. I'm here for the long run, and for so long as I'm able, I'll continue to share this message, a message of hope, a message of inspiration, and a message of encouragement for all first responders who want to make sure they're able to develop and maintain strong situation awareness, and make quality high-risk decisions. I'm dedicated to helping to improve your safety and your survival and helping you to accomplish the most important goal of all, to go home to the ones who love you. And speaking of the mission, I'm coming to you today from the Woodland, Texas, 
Fire Department, where I'm in town to deliver the week-long Company Officer Development Institute program for officers and aspiring officers from the Woodlands and neighboring fire departments in the Houston Metroplex. Thank you to Deputy Chief Rick Windham and Deputy Chief Jerry Bittner, who, by the way, is also attending this class this week, for setting up the program and for your wonderful hospitality. Thank you also to Fire Chief Alan Benson for giving the class some of your valuable time and sharing your lessons on leadership. That certainly was a tremendous value add for the students this week. One of the questions I get asked a lot by readers and listeners are, when are you coming to my area? I want to attend a program. Or where are you going to be next? Great questions. And the answers are really easy to find out. There's a link to all the upcoming events right on the homepage of SA Matters. Just click the blue box on the right side of the homepage labeled Upcoming Events Schedule. If you want to save some money by hosting a program, and who doesn't want to save some money, right? Here's a tip for how you can do that at a reduced cost. Um, I host what I call companion programs. These are programs on adjoining dates to other programs. So if you see I'm delivering a program within a couple hours of your department, and you think you might want to tag along as a companion, contact me. You can save as much as 20% off a program cost by being a companion to an existing program. And I do about 30 of those each year. And no one ever complains about saving money. That's what I call a win-win situation. Before I dive into today's feature segment, I want to take a moment to talk about this Company Officer Development Institute program that I created back in 2009. Some of you know my second passion after situational awareness is developing the leadership skills of company officers, something I did a terrible job of when I was serving as a fire chief. I was guilty of promoting officers before they were prepared to lead others, and that was my fault. Then I got frustrated at them when they didn't do a good job of leadership of their crews and in their stations, and that was my fault too. So I partnered with Indianapolis Fire Captain Patrick Harper, and we created the Company Officer Development Institute. This program has been customized to run from two to five days, and no matter the length, there's no PowerPoint. Did you hear that? No PowerPoint. Can you imagine a week-long class that doesn't use PowerPoint? Is that even possible? Not only is it possible, but it's a better way to learn the skills essential for good leadership. When adults are engaged in the process of learning and not just being lectured to, learning can be fun. And more importantly, the lessons stick. We share practical, actionable, best practices for leadership, problem solving, conflict resolution, teamwork, communications, motivation, accountability, generational leadership, discipline, coaching for performance improvement, and so much more. So when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of the frustrations that come from dealing with uncommitted, unprofessional, undedicated members destroying morale of your department, and they're sucking the life out of you, contact me for a program that will teach your company officers a better way of leadership and committed followership. Contact me when you're ready to have your officers lead differently. Okay, today's feature segment is part three of a five-part series on situational awareness and sanity. When I'm done with the feature segment, stick around, and I'll tell you where you can attend an upcoming Situational Awareness Matters tour stop event. Who knows? Maybe I'm going to be right in your state or right in your county soon. This podcast series is focusing on the seemingly insane things that first responders do while operating in high-stress, high-consequence environments. Oftentimes, those trying to make sense out of these behaviors are quick to judge the participants, saying things like, how could they be so stupid? Or what were they thinking? Or perhaps the worst one of all, I would never do something so dumb. Could it be the responders didn't understand They were in a bad spot. Lessons in neuroscience would affirm this not only can happen, but it does happen, and more often than we wish it would. Let's explore some challenges we have with comprehension. Comprehension. To comprehend is to understand. In order to understand, we must make sense out of what is happening in the moment. To make sense out of what is happening in the moment... One must gather information and process that information into a coherent meaning. When done successfully and accurately, it could be said that the person has good comprehension. 
When comprehension is flawed, it can lead to poor decision making and result in the seemingly dumb things first responders are so harshly judged for by their peers. How we comprehend. In the minds of some people, the process of comprehension seems so simple. Just see something and comprehend it, or just hear something and comprehend it. This is what leads to some people to think situational awareness is simply paying attention. The truth of the matter is, comprehension is far more complex than most understand, and it can be far more challenging than many wish it would be. Before you can comprehend anything, you need sensory inputs. These inputs come into the brain in the form of electrical impulses from the sensory organs. Seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, and smelling are the inputs. The electrical impulses from the various sensory organs are routed to their respective processors in the brain. The inputs are evaluated by each processor and then sent onward to higher regions of the brain where they are compared and contrasted to develop understanding or comprehension. When the inputs are congruent or compatible, comprehension can be quick and accurate. This is aided by past experiences because part of the process of comprehension comes from answering questions like, have I experienced this before? Am I familiar with this input? What have I understood this input to mean to me in the past? Was I right or wrong in my previous assessments of this input? What were the benefits or the consequences of my being right or wrong in the past? What did I learn from previous experience? Your past experiences, most of which reside outside of your conscious awareness, play heavily in your comprehension of current events. Comprehension gone horribly wrong. No one sets out to misunderstand what is happening while working in high-risk, high-consequence environments, yet it happens a lot. Can someone look at something and not understand what they are seeing? The answer is yes. Can someone hear something and not understand what they are hearing? The answer again is yes. It doesn't take a stressful environment for this to happen, but stress coupled with the perception of consequence compounded by the compression of time and the sense of urgency to act can accelerate your need to comprehend. This speeding up can lead the brain to take shortcuts. These shortcuts, termed heuristics, are the brain's way of trying to help you survive in a perceived hostile situation by taking limited amounts of information and, for lack of a better metaphor, jumping to conclusions. The good news is your brain is pretty darn good at this task. If it wasn't, we'd probably be extinct as a species. The more stress you're under, the more heuristics may guide your assessment of the situation and influence your decision making. The problem is, while your brain is very good at making quick assessments and applying these rules of thumb to guide your decision making, it is not a flawless process. It compares current inputs to your past experiences and, with lightning speed, guides you to comprehension. When it's right, you accurately comprehend. When it's wrong, you misunderstand. The problem is you may not know whether you comprehended or misunderstood until after your decision is made and the outcome is revealed. Sensory Integration Your brain is an amazing organ. It can take electrical impulses from all five senses, slice them and dice them and reassemble them and compare them and contrast them into understanding in less time than it takes you to blink your eyes. When the inputs are compatible, comprehension is expedited. For example, when you see an onion, smell an onion, taste an onion, and your eyes water, there is little doubt in your mind that you are in the presence of an onion. Your brain takes all the inputs, assesses them, determines if they are congruent, and then you comprehend.
That is an example of the proverbial low-hanging fruit, or in this case, the low-hanging vegetable of comprehension. But what might happen in your brain if you simultaneously saw an onion, smelled a lemon, and tasted fish? While this example is exaggerated for effect, similar things can happen when you least expect them or desire them to happen. Despite advances in neuroscience, we yet to this day do not understand how the senses are able to integrate, assemble, and comprehend it all. However, research has shown that integration can go horribly wrong. While it may seem obvious, research has proven that sensory integration, the combining of your sensory inputs in the brain, can produce confusion. You can see something and hear something that at the same time have two different meanings. For example, you may see something that says A, but at the same time hear something that says B. When this happens, the senses have to figure it out, which the sensory input is correct, the eyes, or the ears. Because the visual cortex is the largest of all the sensory processors, you are likely to default to what you see. But that doesn't mean that vision will always be accurate. It simply means the brain will use the visual cortex as its most powerful database based on the size of the cortex to influence your comprehension. Confabulation. Sometimes your brain plays tricks on you. It confabulates the truth. Stated another way, it makes things up that just aren't true. When the brain is confused from conflicting sensory organ inputs, it may confabulate or make up a comprehension of what is happening. That is, unfortunately, completely imagined. Sometimes when the eyes see something that says what is going on is A, and the the ears hear something that says what is going on is B, the brain will confabulate or make up its own comprehension of what is happening and will call that C. This was demonstrated by a neurological phenomenon known as the McGurk effect. If you want to learn more about the McGurk effect, you could swing by the SA Matters website and search for the article that I wrote called Understanding Stress, Part 6. Complicating sensory integration is it is possible for you to look at something and at the same time have multiple conflicting inputs sent to your visual processor. For example, if you are being asked to read and remember and listen to seven words in order flashed on a screen one at a time and each word stays on the screen for two seconds. When it's done, you're asked to write down the seven words. So let's imagine the seven words are seven colors. Red, blue, green, orange, purple, black, and yellow. The task could be made easier by integrating two visual inputs that create congruency in the visual processor. If we did that, then the seven colors might be appear in the font color that is the word. In other words, R-E-D would be in red font. B-L-U-E would be in blue font. G-R-E-E-N would be in green font. And so on. When this happens, the visual processing is complemented by having what we see as a color also match what we are reading as a color. But what happens when the visual inputs are complicated by non-congruent information? Imagine if the list flashed before your eyes were written like this. The word red was in yellow font, R-E-D. The word blue was in black font. Green was in purple font. Orange was in green font. Purple was in orange font. Black was in blue font. And yellow was in red font. As you would expect, the task becomes more complex because the eyes are now seeing two different things simultaneously. In this example, as you read the word red, your eyes are actually processing the color yellow. 
This confuses the brain, and confusion causes sensory integration to become more challenging, as does the accuracy of the memory and recall. But that's a different topic altogether. Now, let's make the, the task even more complicated by introducing a third non-congruent input. <clears throat> Imagine if we read the word red, but it appears on a slide that has a blue background, and the word R-E-D is in yellow. The word red, blue background, yellow font. The second one, green background, the word blue, with black font, the third background, orange, with the word green, with a purple font. Clearly, the task of comprehension becomes even more challenging as the conflicts among the various inputs increase. Imagine how the task could become complica complicated even more if non-congruent smells were introduced. For example, when you saw the word red flashed on the screen and the yellow red letters in the blue background, while at the same time smelling an orange. Suffice it to say, comprehension of complex neurological information can be very challenging. The problem is that flawed comprehension can lead to poor decision making, and those poor decisions are then, after the fact, often judged by peers as insane. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, please contact me by visiting the essaymatters.com website and clicking on the Contact Us tab on the top of the home page. Think about it for a moment. The lessons learned from your near miss event could save the life of another first responder. If you want to share your experience, contact me. Okay, as I always do, I want to take a moment to thank the departments and organizations that have hosted some great training for their members on situational awareness. I do this to show my appreciation to the organizations who put forth the effort to organize, advertise, and fund great training experiences for their members and others in their region. Your efforts to bring this valuable and powerful training on situational awareness and high-risk decision-making to your regions are greatly appreciated. Recent tour stops have included the FDNY Incident Management Team, <clears throat> the Ontario Fire Chiefs Association Conference, the Ontario Fire Training Officers Association Conference, the Hartford, Connecticut Fire Department, the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, the Colorado Springs Fire Department, the West Des Moines Fire Department, the Beaver Lake Fire Department in Arkansas, and where I am now presenting the week-long Company Officer Development Institute program for the Woodlands Fire Department in Texas. When I get home from the Woodlands, I'm going to take my annual trip to the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. This is the highlight of my summer and something that I've done every year for the past 15 years. I feel very blessed to have some exciting presentation opportunities on the horizon including July 5 to 11, I'll be in Norfolk, Virginia, July 22, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, July 26 and 7, Charlotte, North Carolina, August 1 in Cleveland, August 2 in Nashville, Tennessee, August 4 and 5, Evansville, Indiana, August 10 and 11, Richmond, Washington, August 22 to 24, Lexington County, South Carolina, August 26 and 7, Houston, Texas, <clears throat> and August 30, Boston, Massachusetts. If you're interested in hosting a Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop program, there are only a couple dates left in 2017, unfortunately. And I'm actively booking programs now for 2018. So if you think your department or your association or your region or your state or your company, yes, we do programs for business and industry too, <clears throat> would be interested in hosting a program, contact me through the essaymatters.com website. Click on the Contact Us tab. We'll get something set up for you. It's not a hard process, I promise. If you want to see the locations of all the upcoming Situational Awareness Matters Tour Stop events, head over to the SA Matters website. Click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage labeled Upcoming Events Schedule. Schedule is always changing, so check back often. The last time I delivered situational awareness programs in southwest Minnesota, I stopped by and visited the sponsor for this podcast show, Midwest Fire. Midwest Fire makes all poly-bodied fire apparatus that's changing the industry. You seriously need to check them out at MidwestFire.com. 
Anyhow, I got a chance to sit down and talk to a few of their employees about what separates Midwest Fire from their competitors. Let's listen in to learn what happens after the sale and the process of building a Midwest Fire Truck. All right, I've heard about the No Dealer Network. I've heard about how to get in contact with Midwest Fire. I've heard about the process of specking a truck, and that's all good. What happens after the sale? Currently, after the sale, um, everything gets turned over to myself um, as project manager. Um, I will then lead you through the build process. Um, If you call in, have questions on your truck, uh, want to make changes to your truck, want updates on your truck, that will all filter through me then rather than the salesman um, at that time. Um, we take pride in you know everything we do here. You've heard that many times. Um, but what we want to focus on is making this the best experience we can for the fire department. Um, it's not always to get a, easy to get a hold of your salesman, whether he's traveling or on the road or at shows where I'm in-house full-time. Um, have 100% control with the project manager um, as well as manufacturing manager of your truck going through the process. So somebody somebody calls you and they have a question or they're saying, can we make this change or whatever. You literally just walk down the hall, out the door, and you're on the manufacturing floor talking with engineering or with the people who are actually building their truck, and you can do kind of a... Uh, real-time problem solving or adjusting on exactly. the specification? Yep. Um, what we do then, um, if there is changes to the truck, obviously there will be a change order involved, but the response time is a lot quicker. Um, you know, most of the departments we work with have a meeting once a month, you know, the volunteer fire department. So if they call in, have a meeting the next night, we're able to get an answer to them, a response to them right away, so we're not holding up the project while it's in production. Super. Well, there you have it, folks. That's what def- differentiates Midwest Fire from their competitors. So check them out at MidwestFire.com. Thank you, Midwest Fire President Sarah Atchison and all your staff for your awesome commitment to improving first responder safety. I sincerely appreciate your support of my mission. If you're not a member of the SA Matters community of learners yet, consider joining. There are over 5,000 members connected here on SA Matters, sharing ideas about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to train members to be critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. Membership is free. And when you sign up, I'll send you a special report I've created for new members called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. Joining also gets you my monthly email newsletter that contains featured content from the blog and podcast. It's truly the easiest way for us to stay in touch with each other. If you're not a member yet, head over to the SA Matters website, click on the red box on the right side of the homepage that says Free Membership. If you want to get connected with me on Twitter, you can follow at Rich Gasway on Twitter. On LinkedIn, you can search for Rich Gasway. <clears throat> on YouTube, you can watch my videos on SA Matters TV on YouTube channel. And on Facebook, you can follow or like the SA Matters page on Facebook. Well, that's it. Episode 167 is complete. Thank you to our awesome podcast sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all of our live event hosts. Thank you to our more than 700 online academy students. And thank you, our listeners, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.